Picture this, the vast Australian outback, a place of rugged beauty and giant feathered menaces? That's right, emus, nature's unexpected bad boys. Our war heroes, fresh from tackling the Germans, were turned down under, ready to swap their combat boots for farming gloves, picturing serene fields and calm sunsets. But wait a sec, what's that noise? The unmistakable sound of Australia's largest birds having an impromptu rave on those same fields. Now, you might be thinking, come on, they're just big chickens, right? Wrong. These six foot tall party crashers became a force to be reckoned with, essentially throwing a feathery wrench into the Aussie dream of peaceful farming. The emus? They were having a blast. The Australians, not so much. Time to channel that warrior spirit and defend the homeland. After the epic clashes of World War I, a bunch of valiant veterans found themselves in a bit of a pickle. The economy was tanking fast, and the poor soldiers were left without jobs, without hope, and without a clue about what to do next. The Australian government, like a knight in shining armor, rode to their rescue. Armed with a proposal, they said, hey you brave soldiers, how about becoming farmers? We'll give you land in Western Australia, and you can grow wheat like there's no tomorrow. The veterans, tired of marching and ready for a new adventure, jumped at the chance. They put on their farming hats and grabbed their trusty shovels, eager to cultivate the land and grow golden fields of wheat. But alas, the Great Depression of 1929 decided to crash the party. The economy took a nosedive, and the promised government subsidies turned out to be as elusive as a platypus in a pond. With every passing day, the farmers became more anxious. They had families to feed, bills to pay, and crops to harvest. But the wheat prices were dropping faster than they could grow. Just when they thought things couldn't get worse, here came the feathered frenzy. Emus. These tall, awkward birds decided it was the perfect time for a grand migration. 20,000 and counting hungry birds barged into the wheat fields like they were on a buffet spree munching, crunching, and gobbling up the crops. It was a full-blown emu apocalypse. The farmers were baffled. What in the world is going on? They cried. The emus, with their eyebrows raised, seemed to say, why not? Your fields are a gourmet restaurant to us. The poor farmers had no choice but to seek help. So they turned to the government, who scratched their heads and wondered, what on earth do we do with these mischievous emus? This was an emergency like no other. Hey there, explorers of the odd. Since you're here with us, we thought we'd take a quick moment to share our mission. As this is our debut video for Hist Oddities, we're excited to be your portal to the peculiar parts of our past. Our goal is to uncover and share the most bizarre, amusing, and unexpected tales from history. So if stories like these pique your curiosity, give this video a thumbs up and consider subscribing to Journey With Us as we dive into the odd side of history. And now, back to the story. The farmers knew that they needed a superhero to save the day, but instead, they got a bunch of ex-soldiers with a wild idea. Machine guns against emus. When the soldiers went to meet the Minister of Defense, Sir George Pierce, they probably expected a lecture about the perils of using military force on birds. But lo and behold, the minister gave them the green light. He must have thought, well, if we can't beat the depression, at least we can beat some emus. Of course, there were a few strings attached. The soldiers couldn't just go full Rambo on the emus. Oh no, the guns had to be handled by the pros, the military personnel. But that's not all. The Western Australian government didn't want to foot the bill for this emu war expedition. So they slyly passed the tab to the farmers. And here's the kicker. The farmers had to provide the soldiers with food and accommodation, like they were hosting some kind of bird blasting bonanza. But hey, if you're going to have a war with emus, you might as well do it in style, right? The minister had another reason for supporting this wild plan. 
he saw it as an opportunity to show off some fancy target practice. In charge of the mission were Major Meredith and two soldiers who were ready to roll. They had all the firepower they needed, two Lewis guns and 10,000 rounds of ammunition. It was time for war. But as they say, the best laid plans of mice and men often go awry. Mother Nature decided to play a trick on our emu hunting heroes. She sent down rain like there was no tomorrow, and the emus scattered like startled kangaroos. The operation had to wait until the skies cleared. Finally, the rain stopped, and the troops were ready to take on the emus. But there was a secret agenda. They also had to collect 100 emu skins to make hats for the light horsemen. It was like a war on one hand and a fashion collection show on the other. With a cinematographer from Fox Movie Tone in tow, it was showtime. On a sunny day in November 1932, the soldiers arrived at Campion, full of determination and eager to unleash their firepower. But the emus were no dummies. They spotted the soldiers from afar and decided to play a game of now you see us, now you don't. They split into small groups and darted around. Undeterred, the soldiers took aim and fired their machine guns. But the emus were just out of range, taunting the soldiers with their bird-brained brilliance. But the determined heroes weren't about to give up that easily. They regrouped and waited for another shot at emu glory. Finally, they spotted a small flock of emus heading their way. This time, they decided to use the element of surprise. They waited until the birds were close enough to smell their breath before unleashing a hail of bullets. But, oh dear, the universe had other plans. Just when they thought victory was within their grasp, the machine gun jammed after a measly 12 emus met their fate. But the soldiers weren't the type to get their feathers ruffled so easily. They kept their spirits high and moved further south, where the emus were said to be fairly tame. Major Meredith, the fearless leader, thought he had hatched a brilliant plan, mounting one of the machine guns on a truck. But little did he know that these emus are the second fastest land birds. The truck struggled to keep up with the birds, and the gunner couldn't hit the broadside of a barn. As the days turned into weeks, Major Meredith and his soldiers fired round after round, but the emus continued to play hide and seek like pros. And in the halls of the Australian House of Representatives, the battle became the talk of the town. The local media had a field day, claiming that only a few emus had fallen. It was a comedic roast, with the emus being the unsung stars of the battle. With morale a bit deflated and the emus one step ahead, the soldiers had to make a tough call. They withdrew from the battlefield. The emus had won this round, but Major Meredith, ever the sportsman, couldn't help but be impressed with the emus' abilities. He compared them to Zulus, praising their maneuverability and resilience. <laughs> the emus continued their relentless invasion of the farms, and the farmers were left wondering how to outsmart these geniuses. The Great Emu War was far from over, and it was time for a comeback of epic proportions. To the rescue came the then premier of Western Australia, James Mitchell. He called the soldiers back into action, waiting for a chance to defend their honor. But dear oh dear, there was a tiny hiccup. The soldiers had lent their guns to the Western Australian government, expecting the locals to handle the emu eviction. But there weren't enough experienced machine gunners in the state. So who came to the rescue again? None other than Major Meredith, our fearless emu warrior. Major Meredith and his troops geared up for the showdown. On the first two days back in the field, the soldiers had a bit of success, taking down around 40 emus. And by December 2nd, they were taking down around 100 emus per week. They were taken as no emu prisoners. Major Meredith, in his report, claimed a measly 986 confirmed kills with 9,860 rounds fired. Not so much of a target practice after all, when only 1 in 10 hit the target. But Major Meredith did mention that 2,500 wounded emus had probably succumbed to their injuries. But the big question remained, did this emu military mission really work? Well, if we're keeping score, it sure looks like the emus took the early rounds. 
10,846 emus heading to birdie heaven was just a drop in the ocean of the feathered fiends munching away in the fields. But Aussies being the resourceful bunch that they are, played a different card. Bounty hunting. It's all about the moolah, mate. In an economic downturn, why chase emus for free when you can get paid for it? In just half a year, over 57,000 emus faced their bounty hunter-induced doom. But wait, there's more. Farmers turned into fortress architects overnight, bolstering their lands with barrier fences. And let's not forget our dear army minister, Josiah Francis, generously gifting the emu hunting cause with a whopping 500,000 rounds of ammo. Now that's a commitment to the cause, hist oddity style. Today, emus are sustainably farmed and appreciated in various ways across Australia. It certainly looks like, in their own unique way, the Aussies have triumphed over the challenges of the past.